What's up guys, my name is Greg, I'm an iOS developer and photographer here in Sydney and in this video I'm going to show you how much money I've made from my apps in the App Store. The purpose of this video is to document and to show my progress when it comes to making new products and a way to inspire others who are trying to do the same. There is so much more to launching an app than to simply develop the app. That's the easy part. Anybody can launch an app these days. What's hard is to market it. What's hard is to make money out of it. Since I started working as an iOS developer, I've always worked on different side projects on top of my full-time job. So here is why. For one, I really enjoy working on new applications and this is also one of the best ways to learn is by doing. And this is how I learn to apply new knowledge and new technologies into my side projects. Two, one of the long-term goals is to create multiple sources of income uh, so that you don't have to rely mainly on your job to survive and to pay the bills. Yes, some apps can make a lot of money, but it's not easy and it takes a lot of time. Also, it really helps to show off your projects when you're looking for another job. If you don't have any side projects and you work as a developer, you're basically relying on your past experience and the previous companies you work for to basically show your experience. So a better way is to build a lot of side projects that really showcase what you're able to do and showcase all of your skills. If you want to know how much a particular app is making, you can go to some of these websites and find out. For example, Sensor Tower and App Annie will give you statistics on download numbers, revenue numbers, the ratings and reviews of any kind of application. This will give you a rough idea of the download numbers and the revenue numbers of any application. Keep in mind, this is just a rough idea, but I think that they're pretty close to the real numbers. Also, if you try to search for my apps on one of these websites, you probably won't get too much information because these websites, they don't really report anything below $5,000 per month and none of my applications is making that much money. So, let's jump into some examples. These are some of the apps that I have made in the past as a side project. VideoFix is a fully featured video editor application that lets you put multiple videos together, increase the speed of the videos, add a filter to the videos, add music to the whole video, and add text labels to the video. So I launched VideoFix in May 2016, and the main reason for me to start looking into video editing was because I wanted to work on a challenging side project, and I learned the hard way, video editing is very complicated when it comes to the software and building a video editor in a mobile application. The total revenue for the whole thing, so since it launched in 2016 until recently was $260 in total. Um, I stopped monetizing it after I stopped maintaining it, which was probably in the space of one year and a half while I was working on it. I stopped maintaining it because I find it very difficult and I found a few things that were kind of blocking my way into creating a more um, complex application. One, I wanted to add music to the videos and give the users the ability to add music, but when you're dealing with music, then you're dealing with copyright in the video. So this is something that I didn't want to get into. So I stopped monetizing it and gave everything for free given that some users were complaining that the app was not working as expected. And yeah, if you want to check it out, the app is still out there. And keep in mind, it hasn't been updated in many years and there is no plan for any updates in the future. Another one of my apps is Simply Scan. It's a basic scanner app that lets you scan documents on a flat surface and you can turn them into a PDF and export them, share them, and you can do a bit of uh, photo editing in them, like turning it to a grayscale or black and white, change the contrast, brightness, things like that. And also uh, change the order of the pages 
in which you scan. So I launched this app in August 2016. The inspiration for this app came after doing a tutorial on iOS while trying some of the new APIs from, from Apple, which I think it was to detect rectangles within a video feed. And this made it very simple to take a screenshot of this rectangle and create basically a scan of it. And at the time there was a lot of tutorials that explained how to do this, so I decided, hey, why not turn this into an actual application? And I did. I have never updated this application since I launched in 2016, and till today it's made about $530 in total. Another one of my apps was Colorfix, which was a fully featured photo editor and Instagram study story editor. And the reason I started working on this application was because I started to get into photography myself and I wanted some kind of application that had a layer functionality to it. So that was the main purpose of the app, but then it evolved into an Instagram story editor after I started to see that this trend was growing and growing where people were publishing more fancy stories into their Instagram stories. So I decided to jump into this trend and realized there was a lot of competition. This was a lot of work to get new templates up and running because the templates were stored in a server somewhere and it was a very complicated process to update the templates and update the app in general. Although at the time I thought it was pretty simple. I could just publish a temple, template and it will show up on the application. But it was very time consuming as well. So the application launched in 2017, September, and I shut it down towards the end of 2020. At most, the application was making around 30 to $40 per month. And as you can see from the video, it was a very complicated application. It had a lot of features to it. And yeah, it was, it was difficult to maintain. So I decided to shut it down because it was, for me, it was not worth the time and effort that I put into it because it was still an expense to run month by month. And also the competition in this space is crazy. There is hundreds of applications just like this one in which you can edit, you can add videos, you can add text animations, and my app did all of that. But I think the competition was simply too much for me to keep up with it or for me to keep on maintaining it. I could potentially launch this app again simply as a photo editor or a story editor without any of the templates, which would be nice because there is a lot of effort that went into this application before I shut it down, but we'll see. My most recent app is on Caption. I decided to test the waters with an MVP first to see if there was any traction to it. So this application allows you to add subtitles to your videos automatically. And when I first started it, it was a way to test the market. It was also a way for me to test some of the APIs from Apple, which was basically capturing the, the speech of a video into text. So this is how the app started. It was very simple, very, very bones. Um, I saw that some people were purchasing some of the uh, in-app purchases. So I decided to upgrade the whole API and some of the limitations that the app had, which was a fixed limit of about 30 seconds or one minute. So I decided to upgrade my usage of transcribing the speech into text with Amazon Web Services, and I also decided to upgrade the design. So with this application, I do intend to try more things in terms of marketing, optimizing for the App Store, optimizing the purchase flow, and really give it a chance for it to become a better uh, revenue source. I launched on Caption on April 2020, which was in the middle of the pandemic. Um, it's been slowly increasing in terms of revenue and as of today, it is making about $250 per month, which is pretty nice. It helps to pay some of the bills and expenses and it's still being maintained. But as I said before, I'm gonna keep trying to increase those revenue numbers for it to become a bigger revenue source. Sometimes a simple app can be way better than a complicated app.
if you find the right niche and the right market and you optimize for SEO and other things, you can do very well. This might be way better than you know creating a fully feature complicated application that is harder to market or you know it's harder to monetize, it's harder to find the audience, it's harder to do some marketing for it. Those are some things to keep in mind uh, when building new products. And I've learned this the hard way, but I'm very happy that I did. Because now I feel that I have more experience when it comes to creating products and launching them and then marketing them. Um, in the future, I do plan to spend some money on advertising and then might decide to document this process in these type of videos. So this is the end of the video. I hope that you got some value out of it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.